Okay, guys, welcome back. So like I was saying, we'll use our force and the stress to find our area. Now, what type of force are we experiencing here? Is it a shear, compressive, or tensile? Tensile. Yes, this force is pulling this surface. Like uh, Kalani said earlier, it's perpendicular to the, to the surface. So it's a tensile force. So we'll obviously use the tensile strength. And we are making our hub out of cast iron. And if we go back to our table, we'll be able to read this cast iron in tension as a maximum yield of eight megapascals. So this eight megapascals, we have solved for our force in this equation and our area is the length of the key multiplied by the hub thickness. Making the hub, the hub thickness, the subject of the formula. It is now force over length of key multiplied by tensile stress, tensile yield. Now, if you do this calculation, you'll come up with a hub thickness. Now, I want to show you guys a Excel sheet that I came up with. Because this step is where you do iterative uh, calculations. Basically, you keep changing the assumed thickness to arrive at some kind of uh, uh, ideal thickness. For each thickness that you do that calculation for, you'll get a different hub thickness. All right. So using our example, I'll enter this into the, you can all see my screen. So this is basically a calculator. We have uh, got the torque that we're experiencing. We, in, we enter our assumed thickness. So 0 0.3. It'll calculate the force. This is the tensile stress, which is constant. And it comes out with a hub thickness above things. So when we put in a value of 0 0.03, it says, that the hub thickness ideal will be 0 0.025 or 25 millimeters. And the factor of safety is 1.0 or 1.2, sorry. So if we put in a assumed thickness or we, we use a thickness of 0 0.03, we get a factor of safety of 1.2. Is that clear? So can we do drawings without using CAD as I don't have a proper device to have my CAD installed? Um, do you have a project partner? An assignment partner? I think in uh, extenuating circumstances, um, there will be exceptions, but I think you have to provide evidence as to why you can't do, do it using CAD. How did you develop the formula? Okay, so the formula is basically what we already know, okay? Um, so assume thickness already done. The force, I just use this same equation that we've already discussed. I just use this equation made force a subject of the formula to find an Basically, I just did force will be equal to the torque that we already know divided by the radius, which is this, to find the force. And then that force I substitute into this formula to find the hub thickness. And then the factor of safety, I do factor of safety is equal to the yield strength. So eight megapascals. 
divided by the working stress, which is the force that we're going to be experiencing, divided by the area that we've calculated for. Okay, so you keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to find the ideal thickness that you want to work with. And if you see again my, uh, my sheet, you can actually see where at what thickness you have a factor of safety of one. So if I put in a thickness of 0 0.026, I get a factor of safety of 0 .0, uh, 0 0.99, which is very close to one. So this tells me that if I have a material thickness of 26 millimeters, I will have a factor of safety of one. So anything greater than a, a material thickness or a hub thickness of 26 millimeters, anything greater than that will be taking into account a factor of safety. And what factor of safety do we work towards? That is where your information given in your assignment handout is very helpful. Okay, so coming back to our assignment, what factor of safety should we work towards? And it's here. For exceptionally reliable materials under controllable conditions, uh, use a factor of safety of 1.25 to 1.5. And we know the materials that we're using are very reliable. We have the information very reliable for the materials that we have. And we know with some degree of certainty the types of forces that will be involved. So we design our thing towards a factor of safety of 1.25 or 1.5. So how did you develop the formula? Can we also use something like that? So can we work backwards from factor of safety? Uh, yes, you can work backwards from factor of safety, basically. E yes, you can, but it becomes a little bit difficult when you work backwards because um, you will have two unknowns. You will have your force, which is unknown, and your area, which is unknown. So that's why it's best to do dummy calculations and do trial and error basis to try and come up with the ultimate thickness. Okay, that's why it is suggested that you do multiple calculations and come up with a trial and error basis rather than working backwards from your factor of safety because there's no guarantee that you'll be able to do it uh, just one shot. All right, so in your assignment, it's probably best if you guys uh, do maybe one or two calculations, just uh, sorry, two or three calculations just to show that you have done the back and forth step here to find your ideal hub thickness. All right. All clear? Okay, cool. So uh, I won't go over the web analysis because it's very similar to our hub analysis, except you don't have to do any assumptions. There's no assumptions in the web analysis. Your radius is just your hub diameter divided by two. However, I will discuss a little bit about the bolt analysis. Okay, so coming to bolt analysis, uh, we have to make an assumption. And the assumption is basically to find what is your PCD. PCD is the pitch circle diameter. All right, let's, um, as the assignment of dining pairs, do we have to, or just one person upload? Uh, just one person to upload, one person per group or one submission per group. Right, looking from the front, this is our hub. Uh, sorry, this is a very crude drawing. And we have our bolt holes. This is front viewer. Now we need to deter, uh, determine what kind of radius we want to set for our pitch circle. What distance do we think this, the center of the opposite hole should be? What's that distance? This is the, called the PCD. And over here, you have to use some common sense, all right? If we have, say, we have a, a hub diameter of let's say 120 millimeters. And this part is 120 millimeters. And 
we want to try and find the PCD. So obviously our PCD will have to be greater than, sorry, will have to be greater than, Hundred and twenty, and maybe we want the distance from the edge of the hub to the center of the holes to be fifty millimeters. So fifty plus fifty, that will be hundred. So let's say our PCD is two hundred and twenty millimeters. Now that five centimeters that you've added in, or that fifty millimeters that you've accounted for, is so that you can fit a wrench or a spanner in there to try and loosen or tighten the bolts when you're assembling your flange. All right. So once we have our PCD, we can use uh, two methods then to, to determine the bolts or the size of the bolts that we're gonna use. So we've already been given in by the client the grade that they wanna use. So they've given the grade and that's a uh, 4.6. And they've given us the sizes uh, M5 to M100. And we have the data table already given in the question. So there's two ways you can go about it. You can either, there's two methods and each group might be different. Each group might use a different method, but there's two methods. You could either state the number of bolts and then solve for the diameter or you could state the diameter and solve for the number of bolts. All right, so you can go about it this two ways. You can either say that I want to use four bolts, but I don't know what size, or I can say I want to use 10 millimeter bolts, but I don't know how many I need to use in order for it to be safe. <coughs> Okay, now these bolts will experience a shear force. All right, they will be experiencing a shear force. So we have to look at the shear strength of the bolts. Now, if we go back to the question or go back to the data sheet, if you read the fine print below this information about the bolts, it says here, the allowable shear strength of the steel fastener is 0 0.66 times that of the tensile yield strength. So our yield stress is 0 0.66 times that of the yield strength. And the yield strength is 240 megapascals. So we do a calculation just to find the yield stress, which is 0 0.66 times 240. We come out with 158.4 something megapascals. So this is the shear strength. And now we use the shear strength will be equal to the force that is exerted divided by the number of bolts times the area of each bolt. And this force again is calculated using the torque. So the torque is equal to the force on each bolt multiplied by the distance. And what is this distance? Can anybody tell me what is this distance? The PCD. PCD is a diameter, okay? So it is actually our PCD divided by two. So pitch circle radius. That'll give us our force and that force we plug into this equation. And then depending whether or not you said that you want to find the number of, or you know the number of bolts and you want to find the area, you can either make the area the subject of the formula in the case of case one, you'd make the area the subject of the formula, or you can make the pulse the subject of the formula in the case of case two. You get me? So if you're gonna state the number of bolts, you could say, um, if you're going to state the number of bolts, so we say three bolts, we would have three is equal, uh, sorry, not three. We'd say the area 
is equal to the force on each bolt divided by the shear strength of each bolt, so 158.4, multiplied by the number of bolts, three. To find our area, and then we know area is equal to pi r squared, because the bolts have a circular cross section. And then that radius will help find us our diameter. And then this diameter, we will match back to the table. This table. So let's say we got a diameter of, uh, after doing the calculation, a diameter of 10.8 mm. Which bolt size would we use then in this case? Which bolt size would we use in this case? M12, yes. Can't use 10. Next size up is M12. We can use M12 or any other size greater than that. Maybe we want to say that the bolt should have a factor of safety of 1.25. So we would factor that in down here. So the yield stress multiplied by a factor of safety. And we would get the number that we're looking for. Okay, are there any questions? Any questions? So we'll be covering these uh, concepts in this week's uh, tutorial as well as next week's tutorial. Uh, if you still have questions next week, we'll uh, go over this again. All right. So thank you very much for attending everyone. If you can just leave your... Uh, am I able to go to USB? Uh, at the moment, uh, no, we're not allowed to actually enter the, the premises. So if you can all just leave your names and ID numbers in the chat, we will update your attendances. Uh, just pass to my colleague, uh, Master Larima, if he has anything else to add before we end this session. Uh, just one thing on the assignment submission. Uh, since there is uh, like uh, if it is uh, like to submission file, you can just uh, uh, change your, you can just throw your your assignment on uh, AutoCAD and then uh, change it to PDF. And then you can combine the two drawings uh, on the PDF and also you can submit as one file. So you can just submit only two files, just the calculation report and the PDF file uh, that has your drawing in it. So you can uh, do that by uh, going to through layout, and then you can uh, change the printer to uh, DWG to PDF. Uh, that's it. That's all from my set. It will be like an easier way for us to mark your.
for well, then we opening the software for the kid and making your assignment. Uh, Vinak. Okay, thank you guys. Just to reiterate, make sure that you submit it as a PDF file. And if there's a file, a file limit, try and combine them all into one, maybe a Word document with snips of your PDFs all into one and submit that. Uh, what drawings are necessary for the assignment, like orthographical section? Um, there will obviously have to be a. Oh, hold on, I'll, I'll pass this one off to just Laurie Matanza. I have to draw it in a symmetric drawing and make sure that you label a drawing the, the dimensions, like the key length and width, it should be in the drawing as well. So you lay it out in an asymmetric view. Yes, assembly drawing, it's, uh, yeah, you should uh, draw an assembly drawing as well, so that it layouts the, the bolt, uh, the flange, as well as the hub of the drawing for your assignment. And you label the assembly drawing. <clears throat> you can also use the information given in the assignment to help draw your bolts. Huh? It's all in uh, the dimensions and everything. <clears> okay <throat> hey guys if there are no more questions thank you very much for attending this week uh have a blessed week and we'll see you all next week <laughs>